You're hitting it. Well. Yeah. It was a novelty. What is it? What is it? It's a super B. That's what I get for buying something Spanish made. Oh my gosh, well that's easy. I want you to shoot that. Get a shoot. Huh? Get a shoot. You want to try it? No, go ahead. Eight shots or what? I need to delete it. Yeah, it's an eight shot. It. Eight shot. You gotta add not put the shell in. Shoot six. You gotta aim it. No, I probably didn't shoot for it. Huh? Oh, no, man. It's probably going over the top. Oh, that was really cool. There you go. Well, it is really, you have to really aim low. This thing's smashing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, if you like that 1911, maybe, but... Yeah. I agree. All right. So I'm here with the Star Super B Spanish gun. Uh, like me, Patinkin and uh, Princess Bride. You know, can you take me for my word? And Carrie Elvis says, your word's no good. I've known too many Spaniards. This thing falls right into that category. Um, this Super B, um, made by uh, Star, uh, Model Super B, as labeled here on the bottom of of the receiver. Uh, what can I say about this thing? It's not a 1911. It's not a Browning High Power. It's an amalgamation of two guns to culminate in one massive failure. Um, the metal work on this thing is garbage. Uh, the metallurgy is crap. Um, I purchased <laughs> I purchased this gun probably two years ago, and I've just recently got it up and running um, after two firing pins breaking. First one, I got maybe 50 rounds through it, the one that came with the gun. 
broke fire and pen. I look up online, okay, these things uh, have a reputation for having uh, brittle firing pins. Okay, maybe I just got one that was really worn out and tired. I found a guy in Arkansas that bought up a bunch of these old star um, parts, you know, because it's, it's no longer a manufacturer. Um, they have since gone out of business for good reason. Um, bought a replacement firing pin, 25 bucks plus shipping. Um, got it in. You have to press out the rear sight. Um, you have to drop out um, all the components. You have to push, uh, press out the pin inside the frame. And the firing pin comes out. You replace it. You get all these parts, including the loaded chamber indicator. You got to get it all lined up. You get it all back in. Press it in. And um, I don't even think I got it to the range. I think I dry fired it and broke it before I even got to the range. Just function testing it. Um, you know, the guy I bought it from, you know, he was willing to send me a replacement, but I said, forget it. Um, this gun clearly has had problems. And this last year, it's been sitting in, on the project shelf in parts in a... Um, you know, in a container in my shed, just wondering what to do. How I was going to manufacture, have someone manufacture a new firing pin. It's about the only option I saw. And then I found a company, I believe, out of Tennessee. Um, I'm ashamed of myself for not having uh, their information. Um, but I found them online as seeing a problem in the market, specifically for this gun and manufacturing um, replacement pins for this firearm at a 4440. Um, nice quality steel replacement firing pin and I bought the whole thing. The firing pin plus replacement springs um, that came in a little kit and I believe that was about 30 bucks. So I said, great. So I got the replacement pin, put it in, it works. It doesn't shoot very well, and I can't really hit anything with it. And normally I'd say it's user error, but I'm, you know, this was after me getting into a good rhythm with other firearms. I was shooting lights out the other day, and <laughs> this thing couldn't hit anything with it. It is, um, like many European firearms, it shoots six o'clock position sometimes. Um, it will shoot six o'clock. It shoots, I thought was low right. Um, it's all over the map. It's all over the map. But, uh, we can go into this firearm a little bit. Built in 1972. Um, this is, um, the next generation from the Star B, which was in 9mm Largo. They started manufacturing this in 9mm Para. Um, it takes some design aspects of a 1911. I mean, obviously, first thing you look at, you see, oh, that's some sort of 9mm 1911 clone, right? Um, it's got this backstrap design, but that's not a spring in there, so it's not taking those aspects of the design. Um, it doesn't have the retention spring system here on the slide. It has a rotating down slide. Let's see, look, in the magazine doesn't want to come out of this dang thing. Which is hard to find, these magazines. Um, probably when you do, a lot of them have some sort of damage. This one came with two. One of them doesn't work very well. Um, this one does okay. Uh, we'll disassemble this thing. It does easily come apart, right? It's got this slide uh, lever down, and then it comes apart from there. Uh, this spring assembly is all contained right here inside of this housing. Um, there's no hammer spring that extends down, um, down the handle. Um, but this is not a 1911 design. You know, this takes the concept of your uh, of your Browning high powers 
you know, you're what you'll see with a lot of, it comes with a bushing, but um, it has a lock-in system, just like you see with, uh, with your CZs and uh, with your high powers. Um, so you, that's, that moves away from your 1911 designs. Um, in here is where you have a firing pin, um, which you have to press out this pin here. And there are some great videos online. A gentleman did a video online uh, that breaks this all, this all down for you. Um, but, you know, pin comes out, you know, knock this side out to do that, and then the assembly comes out from there. Um, I mean, I can see what they were trying to do with this thing. They're taking the best ideas of two really popular, really successful platforms and kind of creating a new one. Um, but I, maybe it's just mine. I've seen other people that have said that theirs seems to work pretty well. Um, that's just not my experience with this firearm. Let's see if I can do this without looking like an idiot. All right. Um, other characteristic of this gun, the safety um, is super stiff. In order to get this thing in, you really got to force it and you feel like you're going to break it with how hard you push it. So it is best to take the tension off of the safety with this thumb, hold it back, engage the safety, and it's a little easier to maneuver uh, to move that way. Um, but other than that, when you're pushing on that thing, you got to give it a good shove. It, you feel like it's not supposed to move. So that's not a very good design feature there. Um, overall, I picked this thing up for $199, um, and I can see why. I probably got it on Classic. I'm not sure where now. I've been so frustrated with this thing. Um, I'll uh, probably not get rid of it, just because I like to talk trash about it. Um, but, you know, it's an interesting piece. It's it's It is fun to handle and hold, and... It's probably not going to be any sort of collector's thing, but um, it was an interesting purchase that I thought would go better than it did. And I think we all have a couple of those in our safe where we decided, well, I don't think I'll make another one of those purchases again. I saw some other uh, more modern versions of the Stars come up um, on Classic Firearms. They have a shorter, more modernized platform. <laughs> For not one ninety nine, I said, "Yeah, fool me twice. No, thank you. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fall into that trap again." But that's the Star Super B in nine millimeter. Um, buy at your own risk. Thanks for.